capital officials are saying that the guard possibly has operated in multiple areas of Florida and extreme caution should be taken when traveling. Guard members are also indistinguishable from other Reds and should always be considered armed and dangerous. Report all suspected guard activity as soon as possible and you may be handled a report. I'm Greg Rockefeller. I'm Beth Rockefeller. And I'm Mia Rockefeller. And this is Reading with the Rockefellers, a family book club podcast. Today, we are discussing Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. So grab a copy and join us on this literary journey. As Maven and I are driven across the bridge, heading back to the palace after our long day of handshakes and secret plans, I wish the dawn would begin tonight instead of tomorrow morning. I'm intensely aware of the rumble around us while we pass through the city. Everything pulses with energy, from the transports on the streets to the lights woven into steel and concrete. It reminds me of the moment in the Grand Garden long ago when I watched the nymphs play in a fountain or the greenies attend their flowers. In that instant, I found their world beautiful. I understand now why they want to keep it, to maintain their rule over the rest, but that doesn't mean I'll let them. Welcome to Reading with the Rockefellers. This is episode 15, Red Queen, chapter 25. Mayor talking some trash there at the end. Yeah, she's very determined. She's got to be. She's got to focus on the job at yeah, hand. Yeah, rising red as the dawn. That's right. It's not easy to lead okay. a revolution. Yeah, plus they're coming back from a meeting where they, you know, they think they've got things. They've got right. all yeah. figured yeah. out. They've got, they've got all this all figured, figured out. out. They know exactly how it's going to yeah. happen. And what's the key to their plan? Who's the key to their plan? Swole cow. Swole cow. His swole cow. Yeah. So unfortunately, because there has been the sun shooting... The king doesn't get to have his big welcome home Mm -hmm. feast that they normally would get to have. No. And that also means that the Kalor brothers don't get to spend the night dancing with all the eligible young ladies in Archeon. Which apparently Cal had to send his cast-offs to Maven because Maven couldn't get any chicks on his own. (laughs) So when Cal would duck them, Maven would just swoop in there and pick him up. Yeah. Or Cal would straight up ask them, like, say, dance go ask my, my brother. brother to dance. Yeah. yeah. So Maven's okay. telling all of this to Mare, and she's like, I'd ask you to dance. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> she's getting real good at that, though. She is. She really is. Yeah, this was Maven just shoveling exposition at it. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But at least it's done in an efficient way. Right. It is. Just kind of like, here, one more one more spoonful of yeah, exposition just a little bit more. for you. And it, adds, more. it does add more to his character of what we already knew pretty much, is that here's Cal, and this is Cal's brother. Cal's Not brother. Cal. <laughs> yeah. Right, this is... This is our, this other, is our son, other son. Cal's brother. Cal's brother. Yeah. Must be what it's like to be a Hemsworth. Right. This is our son, Chris. This These is our... one of our other sons. These are our other sons. One of Chris's brothers. Chris's brothers. He has brothers? There are other Hemsworths? <laughs> Two, last time I counted. Yeah, the fan casting, we get that one a couple of times for this book. Oh and my I'm, God, it annoys me. It's so annoying. It's annoying. I'm kind of not hearing it, yeah. No. Well, no. He's also like, Liam's what, in his 30s now? Probably, no. yeah. The first Hunger Games was like 12 years ago. Let's move on. So... Nobody from that cast can no. be in anything now. Unless they're playing an older character and they were like, well, yeah, be young. that's true. Oh, except for Natalie Dormer has to be Farley. But she's but she Natalie Dormer, age, so. so yeah. <laughs> she hasn't. Not even a little bit. Anyway, let's get back on track. <laughs> so yeah. Mary would ask Maven to dance because she's uh, she's got the stars in her eyes. Whatever boy she changed her is there for her... her she feels is there for her at that moment is the one that she is into. I mean, I guess, but she's, like, throughout the whole chapter, even though she's with Maven, she's still thinking about Cal. Right. 
So I think she's trying to force herself to feel a certain way about Maven. Mm-hmm. And it's just not going very well because she right. keeps thinking about Cal. She wishes Cal were the one doing all the things Maven's doing for her. Right, right. exactly. But it's not. But Maven. it's Maven. It's, it's, like, not good it's like Maven is the one who's been really nice to me, but Cal's really hot. <laughs> yeah. And like uh, the Marshall Tucker band? No. Uh, if you can't be with the love. If you can't you be with the one you love, love honey, the one you're love with. The, the one you're with. Yeah. yeah. I just completely butchered that. <laughs> you tried. I tried. It's a good song. Give you an A for effort. So, speaking of getting distracted, Mare's watching the troops practice their swolitude in the <laughs> barracks. And she starts wondering if the plan the next day is going to work. Because this whole thing hinges on Cal. Right. And if she can't turn Cal, then it's not going to work. Right. So Maven tells her again, he will always choose you. Like, he keeps hammering this point home that Mare means so much to him and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Because in books, things always go the exact way the protagonist wants them to. Exactly, yeah, totally. Right. What books are you reading? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've, we've already talked about the trust issues that this book will give you. Oh, yes. And in the Delirium series that you're reading, quite a few trust issues with that one, too, because they hide a lot of places and they get turned in by some people that, yeah, they think are really close to them, so... Mm. Yeah. It happens. Reading can give you trust issues. Very much so. And so she's still, like, she's not only trying to convince herself that she doesn't feel anything for Cal, she's got to convince Maven, too. Right. So she she smiles and holds his hand and tells him that she feels nothing for Cal. <laughs> and she's hoping, yeah, exactly. Right. She's hoping that that counts for something. It does not. I think. No. Maven, at this point in time, is content with letting her think that it does, though. So he's just going along with it to get to the end game. So it fits with his agenda, too. Right. So they walk back into Mm -hmm. the palace. Yeah. And what do they hear? I hear someone screaming. Mad screaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Like blood screaming. screaming. Yeah. Well, M- Mare does what she does best as soon as they hear the screaming. She runs. Right. But instead of turning and running away from the screaming... She's running, too. She's running to the screaming. But she's because, still running. Yeah, because, she, I mean, she's Mare. <laughs> but she knows that if somebody's screaming like that in this palace, it's probably a red. Right. And it's probably a member of the guard that mm-hmm. they've gotten a hold of. Yeah. So... We know that even though it's not in the book at this point, she's probably like, what if they have Kalorn? Right. Well, it's kind of a girly scream. I mean, so it tortures, could be tortures, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Did you say so it could yeah, be Kalorn? Yeah, it could still be Kalorn. But they run, they're running, and Lord Samos, like, steps out into the hall or whatever. And Mare practically runs into him, and I picture this like a Scooby Doo moment in the chapter where Mare has to stop short, and you can see like little skid marks <laughs> behind her feet. But then Maven can't stop soon enough, so he bumps into so her. So he bumps into her. The only funnier thing would have been if that would have knocked her into Lord Samos. There are a couple times in this chapter where I picture like cartoon, yes. Type tropes there are some it's weird because it's a depressing chapter yeah maybe it's how my brain is keeping itself from just slipping into absolute depression could be that's fair who do they have it's walsh Ah. and everybody is gathered around the high lords and ladies of the high houses the king and queen are there cal and evangeline are there cal's got his red battle suit on. Right, their other son, Evangeline's brother, is there. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Well, he he's the one that brings in yes. Walsh. Yes. Drags her in. 
by her hair and basically throws her at the feet of the Legion. And Mare realizes it's Walsh. Mm -hmm. And right when she does, she looks at Cal and he looks back at her like they lock eyes. Because he knows that she's about to be real mad. So. I mean, he's not sorry. He's not, no. And you know, I wonder, you know, Mare has this inner monologue where she's talking about he doesn't look regretful about what he has to do and you know, it, what does she think? Like, he's just going to stop in the middle of all this and be like, ah, no, never mind. Uh, no, this is as far as I go. Like, he's a soldier. He's committed to killing Reds and shutting this down. I don't know why she thinks that just because he might recognize the face of the person that that's going to stop him. Right. Right, and also the thing that they have to understand with Cal is that if he were to just suddenly flip flop, he would be going against his father. And there's no way that's ever going to happen. Right. I mean, that's treason at that mm-hmm. point in time. He could right. be jailed that's, and possibly executed. What's kind of hilarious about their whole plan is their whole plan is basically, oh, Cal will choose you and he'll talk to the king and tell the king that he needs to step down. And that, what? Yeah. Hey, Cal wouldn't A peaceful do that. Too. Transfer the, of the king's power. not just going to be like, okay, son, I'll step down now. That's not Thank happening. you for showing me the error of my ways after all these years. <laughs> this was the silliest plan and one that I'm like, how did they not see okay. that this was going to fall apart? I was. They're kind of desperate. And also, they're thinking, like, best case scenario if this works. But they're not thinking worst case scenario. What if it doesn't? Well, right. I think, and I think Mayor's thinking with her heart and not her head. And she needs to stop because she doesn't want. Well, but she's also getting prodded. I mean, you know, Maven's like, Cal will always choose you. Cal, and it sounds like that. Cal makes googly, googly eyes at her, and clearly Cal is into Mare in a real way. But that doesn't mean he's going to give up everything he's known and turn right. traitor on his own father. Yeah. I just don't. He's made his stance Perfectly pretty clear. clear. At the up until now, but they're still hinging all this on Cal. Cal choosing Mare because Maven keeps reassuring her that when it comes down to it, Cal will always pick her. Right. So she's acting on the information that Maven's giving her. Without that information, she wouldn't be doing this. Maybe not, but it didn't take a whole ton of prodding for her to go, no, Maven's right. You know what I'm saying? And I, mean, I think it didn't I, take I think, Julian a lot either, but still. No, <laughs> no, it didn't. But I think her with her, it's also it's easy. It's not just that Maven gives her that information, but she wants to believe that that's true. Oh, definitely. So it's easy to get her to believe it. Definitely, yeah. I, Maven has picked up on the fact that there's you know chemistry or a spark or something between Cal and Mare, and so he wants to make sure that he is reassuring Mare that. Cal will choose her. Right. And so I guess it's a guard or is it Ptolemus that tells them that where Walsh was caught? Yeah, it's Ptolemus, I think. And basically Walsh was caught scanning the tunnels to make sure that there were no soldiers down there so that Mare and Maven could make it back from Nersi. Mm-hmm. Which is the name of the Red City. We forgot to mention that in the last episode. Did we? I apologize, listeners. We, we, no, I don't think so. We're pretty sure we left it completely out. I didn't have it anywhere in any of my notes or anything. So. I, I mean, I may have said it. The yeah. Red City's called Nersi. The one that everyone thinks is irradiated. It's so irradiated. Yeah. yeah. Which is not. And so Walsh was guarding the tunnels to make sure that the giant metal worm, also known as Undertrain or, yeah, Undertrain. Yeah. Could make it back. And so Mare has to think to herself, because she's a catastrophizer, that they made it back safely and Walsh did not. Mare's never one to pass up a good guilt trip. Yeah, so she's all she's always like, it's my fault. Yeah. Someone is suffering and it's all because of me. It because is. I am an expert at throwing myself pity parties. True, true. It is your fault, Mare. <laughs> But this is where it gets busted by Cal that 
the guard is using the underground tunnels that they went as far as the radiation detectors would allow them to go and they discovered miles and miles and miles of these tunnels that you know they know nothing about that it's Mm -hmm. obvious that the guard has been using quite effectively so the jig is up on that and they're you know come out that they're using the tunnels so are they going to torture Walsh here and try to get more information? Is that, is that what they're going to do? Well, it definitely seems that way. Uh-oh. But the, they don't They don't get to? The, the king is like, we're not going to make the same mistake that we made before. We're just, Alara is just going to yeah, take Alara care of this right thing. now. Yeah. And before they can start in uh, on Walsh, one of the guard who's an egree like from the house egree and they have the like the short foresight they can yeah. see things that are just about to happen he sees walsh going to attack her captor and so mm-hmm. he's like quick grab her arms and hold her so she can't you know and they don't grab her quick enough but instead of attacking her captor, she shoves something in her mouth and slams her head back and swallows something. Mm-hmm. It's a suicide pill, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Suicide pill. Poison. She starts to foam at the mouth, and then she seizes and basically just falls over dead before anybody can really do anything to stop her. Yeah. And Mare is pretty flabbergasted. But uh, she's also kind of relieved because at least she can't talk like Laura right. can't get anything from her she was catastrophizing again exactly when thinking about it oh here it goes Alara's going to torture Walsh and Walsh is going to talk and she's going to tattle on all of us and we're all going to die slow horrible deaths <laughs> it's like girl you love that drama <laughs> she loves that drama she loves Mom. that drama it's like she always turns everything into the absolute worst case scenario. She really does. Except for this plan, apparently. Except for this plan. And which she's like, it will work. It has to. But it is one less person she has to get a Christmas present for. Wow. You think that they still care? I'm just trying to give Mara a sunny side. Yeah. I mean, she's not going to get caught yet. True. That's her sunny side. Nobody's talking. Good point. The, the guard seems to be. Members of the guard seem to be more loyal to the guard, maybe, than Mare would have realized. Yeah. They're yeah, actually willing to give their lives for this? Yeah, they're not, they're not joking surprised. around. Cal tells her that those pills are regularly given to soldiers on the battlefield or their spies. So if they're captured, they won't talk, basically. So this is not something that, even though Mare thinks, like, oh my gosh, you know. Cal tells her, yeah, I mean, that's pretty standard stuff for somebody who would rather die than talk. So she's basically standing there. She's just watched one of her closest friends that she's known the longest in this particular world anyway, having died. So fun stuff. You can see why we said that we had to keep this chapter light and reading it for ourselves. Wonderful, wonderful chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, so at this point in time, Mare is now just literally sick by Cal's presence. He makes her skin crawl, she says. But she has a feeling it's going to change you real quick. Yeah. She has to keep reminding herself that she can't act like she hates him right now because she has to keep the hope alive. That he still has a shot with her because she has to convince him to flip his legion. This whole thing rests on how Cal feels about her. So she can't be spiteful and vindictive towards him right now. Because she's is, still got to keep leading him on. Which is really hard for her. Yeah, she's super mad. So she's ready. She literally has. She literally says something and then immediately has to tell herself to be careful. Yeah, like back, walk it back. Because she's, she's on 11 and she can't. Yeah. She can't be there with Cal right now. She can't even at this moment. No. She really can't. She just can't even. And but even in all of that, she's she's telling herself, you know, I've gotta keep Cal interested, I've gotta make him think that he's got a shot with me. And even in the back of her mind after that, she's like, 
I'm still thinking that if I had my choice, my feelings would tell me that I would be with Cal. Mixed like, signals, girl! Yeah. She she knows, too. Oh she's God. just not admitting to herself that she's got serious feelings for Cal. And Cal has serious feelings for her. So, what happened to I Feel Nothing for Cal? Where'd that go? I mean, we nice. all knew that was a lie, nice. but... She saw Cal. And all this swollen. Pretty much, yeah. He waltzed in and was like, hey. He's like, oh, right, I do like Cal. Oh, right, mind. swole. Ooh. But the great thing about Cal, and I'm saying that with inverted commas, because Cal is not great at saying things to comfort people. No, no, he's not. <laughs> he, he points out to Mare, trying to make her feel better, that Walsh had a better death than she would have gotten at the hands of the Silvers. How does that make her feel better? I, I don't know what he thinks he's doing, but I guess he's like, there, there, comforting her, <laughs> you know. We would have tortured right. her way worse than that. She would have had a horrible death. Right. She, like, at least, you know, at least it wasn't, you know, at least it was relatively quick. Quick and, yeah, no torture. Right. None of that stuff. That nobody's freezing her blood and making it. Yeah. Come don't up out of her veins. No, don't oh, well, remind me of that. Or she would have been sent to the bowl of bones. Yeah. So we should probably talk about this. Yeah, because that sounds fascinating. I like to picture the bowl of bones as like the sarlacc pit, only made out of concrete. Mm. So not the sarlacc pit, because the sarlacc pit was an actual living thing. Well, yeah, but <laughs> like very similar construction-wise uh, type thing. Actually, you know? I. It's described as like a violent crown. I like to picture just like yeah, like spikes jagged like coming up. spikes coming up everywhere that somehow form walls. Yeah. And then like they're they're just like the spikes at the top and they're concrete but they look really pointy somehow. Kinda yeah. like Thunderdome from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. There you go. Yeah. Kinda like that. Yeah, so very intimidating intimidating yeah. type arena situation. And what they do at the Bowl of Bones is public executions. Yeah, and they're broadcast. Yeah. Walsh would be taken there and she'd be executed to a huge crowd and also be broadcast mm -hmm. on TV. Yeah. Mayor asks Cal, like, I thought you guys didn't do the whole broadcast execution anymore. I haven't seen any in over a decade Okay. Since I was a little yeah, girl. Right. Seven-year-old Mayor Barrow is watching yeah. public executions, executions on TV. Yeah. On television. Yeah. I, I put in my notes. Think about that. Yeah. I, That's what these kids were raised with. And you as a silver wonder why they're revolting. Right. Exactly. In over a decade. So she would have been like five or six. Small. Yeah. Very little. And Giza would have been even younger. Right. So these kids were forced to see their kind killed. On TV for sport, basically. And then you wonder why they rise up. Mm -hmm. It's like, duh. And so Cal tells her that there's always an exception. That they, they would have made an exception for Walsh's execution to be broadcast. Because the arena fights were supposed to keep Reds in check. But they haven't worked. Yeah. That's not working, so they're like, well, we might as well start broadcasting executions and right. show these Reds that we mean business. Yeah, they need to send a stronger message. Hopefully that would have worked, I yeah. guess. Well, and Mare appeals to Cal here. She's like, but you knew Walsh, you know, you sent her to me when I first got here, you know, I, and then she asks him, like, why did you bother? You know, oh, she, the exact quote is, I still don't know why you cared. You didn't even know that I was different. When she first came to the palace, nobody knew mm -hmm. that she had an ability. And Cal's response is, you were different to me. Uh -huh. Ugh. Okay. So Mare one-ups that. And she says, I wonder what could have been if all this... And, you know, gestures to everything around them hadn't been between us. And she's like, let him chew on that for a while. Yeah. You know, give him the what if. 
And then she finishes it with, but that can never be a cow. Oh, so she's trying to do like the, you can't have me, so it makes you want me more. Exactly, yeah. She's trying to bring fake tears to her eyes, basically, thinking about all the sad stuff. Kalorn, Maven, Oh, she's really good family. at that. Yeah, she's, she's Kirstie Alley crying on cue, <laughs> really working the tears up for Cal. Um, she doesn't like being so cruel to him because she does care, but she's got to do it for the cause. And Cal, being a dude, goes in for a kiss. <laughs> Totally misreads it. Yeah, totally. I mean, no, he reads it right, pretty much, but it's but Mare's putting on an act at this point in time. Like, if Mare hadn't been acting, he would have been reading it right, but... She's probably like, is this a good time? Yeah, no, I think it's a good time. This is, we've set things up pretty nicely for this nice little make-out session here. Well, she this is where Mare turns and walk, like goes to walk away. You know, she's like, he wants to kiss me. I can't do that. So she turns to walk away and he says, I wish things were different. You know, knowing that he's got all these responsibilities and everything he's got to do, but he also has feelings for her. And then he says, Julian says, you're like her, like she used to be. And of course, Mare knows that he's talking about Corianne, Mm -hmm. about his mother. So Cal is like, Pulling out all the stops here to keep her from walking away. <laughs> I wish things were different. You remind me of my mom. Please don't walk away. <laughs> <laughs> kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I like the quote that they have about Corianne, though. Um, she was taken too soon from those she loved, and she left a hole they're trying to make me fill. So those are shoes that Mare is trying to put herself in as well. She's really taken on a lot of self-imposed responsibility here. Yeah. You know? No one's putting all of this on her. No. Yeah. She's doing it. But Cal's kind of guilt-tripping her, I guess. I don't know if he's guilt-tripping her so much as he's just telling her how he feels. Yeah. And she thinks to herself, as much as I hate to admit it, I can't blame Cal for feeling caught between two worlds. After all, so am I. <laughs> she loves the drama. And and here's Mare. Are you sure it doesn't love her? Poor K no loves her. <laughs> I swear I don't love the drama. It loves me. That's right. Mare thinks, I can't wait for dawn. If we win in the morning, the sun will set on a new world. The king will throw down his crown, passing his power to me, Maven, and Farley. The shift will be bloodless, a peaceful transition from one government to the next. If we fail, the bowl of bones is all we can hope for. But we will not fail. Cal will not let me die, and neither will Maven. They are my shields. <laughs> In my notes, I had another Mary, you beautiful little tropical fish. <laughs> I love how she she starts with like this will all be so peaceful, it'll be bloodless, everything will be fine. And then Nobody's like, going to get hurt. And then she's like, oh, but if we fail, everyone is going to get hurt. But that's not going to happen. I'm not going to get hurt. Right. I mean, did she... I'm the protagonist. When, I'm invincible. When she was thinking about that, did she hear herself? In her <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't think she ever The king herself. will step down and hand power to me and Maven and Cal. It'll be a peaceful... What? It we'll all sit around and sing Kumbaya and make s'mores. Because they... <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. She's living in a fantasy world. Oh, you beautiful little tropical fish. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all these people have told her, like, this is just the beginning. It's only going to get worse from here. And she's just like, la, 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 <laughs> la, 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 Right. And also the assumption. Everything is great. And also the assumption that, like, the king will just reach into his pocket and hand toss her some keys to the kingdom and it would be a <laughs> And that's switch. it. <laughs> what about all the other people <laughs> like that aren't going to be happy about that? Car. Yeah. Like, oh, thank you for pointing that out to me. Yeah. What? Oh, sure, you can have the kingdom, no big deal. And Lord Samos is like, sure, yeah, I'll right. bow down to Maven now. Just fill all it up the, before you bring it back. And all the, like, all the, <laughs> like, all the other high houses are just going to be fine with this. I, you know, I don't even Alara, know. Alara, I don't. Right. Mayor definitely has not thought that far ahead. No. 
Farley doesn't live in the palace, so she doesn't care. But, you know, Mare is just living in a fantasy world at this point in time. But you would think Neven would have thought about that. I have theories. We'll get into them in chapter 26. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have some thoughts about Farley also after we get through chapter 26. Because I think that Farley knows a lot more that's going on here, or suspects a lot more of what's going on here than we think she does at this point. Yes, definitely. She is, catches on to stuff pretty darn quick. She reads people much better than people realize she does. Yeah, and Mare can't read anybody right, so no. she definitely no. doesn't pick up on it. So everybody goes to sleep to get ready for the next day, and she has a dream about Shade. Oh, honey. I know. What does she do? Sweetheart. Okay. So, basically, she dreams of him saying, there are others, you must find them. So exactly what she told Farley to do, just Shade telling her in a dream, because we needed to remember that he's dead and that it depresses Mare. (laughs) <laughs> right. Right, exactly. Just one more shot in before the hammer really falls next chapter. I thought it was the one where Shay just kinda of walked up to her in her dream and slapped her upside the <laughs> face and was like, Wake up, Mare, what are you thinking? Yeah, for real. <laughs> Duh Hello. Yeah. Do you guys want to tell the listeners what you had this section of the notes titled? <laughs> Do we have to rise? Hilarious. Do we have to rise Rose the Dawn so early? Because they get up at what it was like four? Four AM. Four AM, yeah. yeah. I guess Scarlet Guards rises early red right as the dawn. I mean, red right as the dawn, they kinda rise with said dawn. Right. Well, and also with what they're gonna do, they need to do it before right. like the morning commute starts and they start having civilians right. traveling around. Yeah. Because you can't, you know, That's the, the whole good. Scarlet Guard's purpose is to destroy the empty places so they don't have to worry about casualties. So four AM comes around and they head out to behind the war command building, which I'm taking is next to the palace. Yeah. Kind of sounds like. I mean, it's all in, building. it's all like in the square. Yeah. It's all pretty close. Caesar Square Caesar or square. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So so they get out there, right, and they're like, no one's there, and Maven's already just <laughs> flipping out. He's like, oh, they're so late. They're so late, and then you just hear Farley be like. I'm not. I'm not late. I'm right here. Maybe you. And then we, and there's like Scarlet Guard all. Right. Over the place. They're waiting position. everywhere. Yeah. So, is this where uh, Farley gives the gift to Mare? Yes. From? Kalorn. And what is this that she gives to Mare? Uh, she gives her an earring, and it's green, the color of Kalorn's eyes. Might have teared up a little bit at this so part. So, here's guy number three throwing himself <laughs> in there. Friend zone guy. Now, to be fair, to be fair, uh, Kalorn is the OG throwing himself at Mare Guy. Right. He's 100%. been doing it since they were kids. He's 100%. also Cal and Maven are the newcomers. Since they were right. kids. But he's, he's really still trying, friendship, man. buddy. He's, she's like, I'm going to put you here with my other brothers, brother, <laughs> buddy. And, and how... Do you just pierce your ear like that? She's done it a lot. I mean, I she has, you know, she has three. Yeah, she point, has three, three already. Others. So she just, she does it. It's not. She as, pierces geezes too. It's not as easy as you think. It doesn't no. just happen like that. I pierced my own belly button when I was 16 and it took like two hours. It's not an easy thing to do. She just kind of smushes it through and it draws blood. Not how any of this works. But right. still. She pulls her hand back and is like, whoops, so glad nobody saw that. Or at least that's what I thought. It's like you're just going to bleed right there in front of everybody. Well, I mean, she doesn't. Is there anybody there other than her and Maven? There's a bunch of Scarlet Scarlet Guard Guard people. Not yet. There's not anybody there yet. Well, yeah, but you really think at this point anyone's going to care? I mean, they're staging a revolution. Oh, that's true. They're, They're staging a coup here. So, you know. 
I'm staging a revolution. Everyone's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Express my individuality. Everyone's doing it. So then, what transpires? Something big happens here. So, the bridge explodes. The bridge, it leads to Archeon, the way in and out of, of Archeon. Well, that bridges west and east right. Archeon. Right. It explodes, like Mythbuster, Mythbuster style. Mythbuster style, yeah. Big explosion that destroys a lot of stuff. Yeah, definitely controlled demolition type situation. So this mm-hmm. brings people out, including, firstly... Cal in his PJs. This, right. is, this is another kind of like cartoon moment for me. I feel like he's standing there in one of those like long nightgown, like, old timey nightgowns yeah, yeah, yeah. with the nightgown, with, like, the cap, with the cap it's flapping 100%. in the wind. Uh-huh. The cap flap, yeah, yeah. Twas the night before Christmas yes. style. Yes, yes. very that's Bob ex- Cratchit. Yeah, that's exactly. What, did we all imagine the same thing? Yes. Sure did. Yes. Either that or um, like. My grandpa would always wear like pinstriped pajamas, you know, mm. matching top and bottom striped pajamas. He'd yeah. go change into his pajamas before bed, something that like that, you know, cow comes rushing out yeah. in his. But I don't know why I also jammies. I also picture him having like a sword around his waist with, but still with like the full nightgown on. And he was able to strap on his tra- tactical belt on the way out the door. Yeah, so like he's holding the sword, and but like his. His like nightgown and nightcap are flapping yeah. in the br- yeah. Exactly. I don't know why, but it it's really funny to me. I'm picturing it. And Cal is probably like Lassiter to where he has at least one gun on him at all, all times. Time. Yeah. So he sleeps with like his ankle gun on. So he's right. got his ankle gun on, his tactical belt, his long night shirt, and the hat, and he's running he's, through the square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out what's I hope going you enjoy on. Enjoy the picture we painted for you. That's right. And a teddy bear clutched under his arm. <laughs> no, that made me go a bit far. There's some pretty cool descriptions of the bridge blowing up. Mm-hmm. I like that. She was very descriptive about the sounds and everything mm-hmm. that it makes when the bridge... The shockwave almost knocks Mare over. Yeah. Then the smoke and everything, you know, and you can hardly see anything because of all the smoke and ash and debris and everything. So Cal is barking out orders. He wants guns on the gates. He wants nymphs on the other side of the gates to put out the fire because he doesn't want the fire spreading. And his little ants go marching off to do his bidding. Mm -hmm. And Maven goes to start this negotiation with Cal. Maven Mm -hmm. steps out like, I'm going to go talk to Cal and we're going to start, you know, talking about what's going on. And then Mayor stops him. She's like, nope, I'm the one that has to to do do it. All this rests on me. So I'm the one that has to go talk to Cal. Because he'll always choose me. Right, Maven? That's what you said. Yep, that's what he said. Maven? You there, buddy? (laughs) You know, Mayor goes out to Cal. You want to read that part, Mia? So, first, Cal is like, go back inside. It's not safe for you out here. And then Mayor... Gets real intense. So I'll read the actual actual thing here. With strength I never knew I had, I grab onto the collar of his shirt, and somehow it keeps him still. What if this was the cost? I toss a glance back to the broken bridge, now shrouded in smoke and ash. Nothing but a few tons of concrete. What if I told you that right here, right now, you could fix everything? You could save us? By the flicker in his eyes, I can see I have his attention. Don't. He protests weakly, one hand grabbing mine. There's fear in his eyes, more fear than I've ever seen. You said you believed in us once, in freedom, in equality. You can make it real, with one word. There won't be a war, no one will die. He seems frozen by my words, not daring to breathe. I can't tell what he's thinking, but I press on. I must make him understand. You hold the power right now. This army is yours. This whole place is yours to take, and to free. March into the palace, make your father kneel, and do what you know is right. Please, Cal. And of course, Cal immediately says, You're right, Mayor. I should turn traitor on my country and my father. <laughs> That's yeah. how it goes, right? Exactly. Um, well... And then they kiss, and it's the end of the book. Happily yeah. ever after. Well, no. Oh. <laughs> well, Mayor does kiss him. Yep, Mare does kiss him. And he's cold as a fish. 
She's like, is this the right time to make out? Sure, why not? Let's go. Cal, it's not. I'm sure Cal probably thinks for a minute, maybe this is the right time to make out. <laughs> well, but he's, he's see, got other stuff on his mind. See where this goes, did I'll execute it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and she lays it on really thick. We're all thick. Yeah. Choose me, I breathe against him. Choose a new world. Make a better world. The soldiers will obey you. Your father will obey you. Then she drops it on him. It was my blood in the cells. I helped the guard escape. And soon everyone will know, and they will kill me. Don't let them. Save me. Save me, Swolby One Calnobi. <laughs> Save me, Swolby One Calnobi. You're my only hope. You're my only hope. Oh, that was good. And and Cal's reply is, it was always you. So Mare's thinking, oh, maybe this is... Maybe I've maybe, got a chance. Yeah, maybe. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> she's she's like, oh, maybe Maven was right. You know, yeah. maybe this is going to work. So she pushes a little further. You know, come along with us. Cal, greet this new dawn. We're going to rise up. We're going to take over. You can join us. And he looks at... At Maven, they lock eyes and they have like a silent conversation. And I think Cal starts putting two and two together here, right? Which in Cal math equals seven. Hundred percent. <laughs> I thought you were going to say five. I was, and then I looked at your dad, and I was like, he's going to say seven. <laughs> so, and but then Cal says again, it was always you, and so Mare's like, oh. oh. It was, you know, oh, it was always me, again. But that's not what he means. He means the escape, the shooting, the power outages. Maven was part of it. He knows. Yeah, it all started with Mare, and Maven helped her. Yep. So he knows exactly what's and up. And he's kind of angry now. Oh, he's super angry. Yeah. Greg's, Greg's got Cal's quote. Okay, here's what Cal says. <clears throat> I'm going to channel my swollenness. Have it on your script there. How many people have you killed with your dawn? How many children? How many innocents? His hand grows hot, hot enough to burn. How many people have you betrayed? Before Mayor can answer, she looks over at Maven, who's yelling at her to run because Farley is signaling to him. Like, basically, like, run, run, everybody run. For the tunnels. Right. Plans off. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Because here comes Cal's Legion. They've realized that the guard is in the drains and he sends them down into the drains to get after them. the guard. Mayor, of course, starts thinking about Kalorn mm-hmm. down there because he probably yeah. is. And right. she can't see what's going on. She can just hear... Like gunshots. Yeah, gunshots and screaming and everything else. And Cal is next to her shaking. So, you know, he's, he's, the gravity of what's going on is not lost on Cal either. No. But she knows that he is not stopping them. You know, he's not saying, hey, everybody put down your guns. We're going to talk about this. Even after she begged him to choose her. So she knows that they've lost. That yeah, she over. knows yeah. that she's screwed. So she screams back at Cal, basically answering his question, now furious. She says, How many? I scream back at him, finding the strength to face him. How many starved? How many murdered? How many children taken away to die? How many, my prince? I thought I knew hate before today. I was wrong about myself about Cal, about everything. The pain makes my head spin, but somehow I keep my feet. Somehow I keep myself from falling. He will never choose me. My brother, Kalorn's father, Tristan, Walsh, what feels like a hundred names explode from me, rattling off all the lost ones. They mean nothing to Cal, but everything to me. And I know there are thousands, millions more, a million forgotten wrongs. Okay, you named four. (laughs) Back off a little bit. And all Cal can reply with is, I wish things were different. You know, it's just the only thing he can think to say at this point is, 
I wish things were different. And so she's expecting to spark up, you know, she's angry and she's like, any minute now I'm going to spark up and turn around and lightning bolt him. But nothing happens. But nothing happens. She feels cold hands around her neck and then cold steel around her wrists. And who is it? It's Instructor Arnon. Is it turning off her powers? Yeah. The silence. Yeah. And she, she calls him the one that can make us human. Honey. Did you catch that? Honey. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're, you're an, an us now. You know what I mean? I would just right. thought it was very interesting when I read that. I was like, oh. Kind okay. of. Yeah, kind of. Gonna put, puff it up her chest there a little bit, didn't she? Yeah. But then she's instantly a sobbing little girl on her knees and is pushed down to the ground and Maven is pushed down. Well, cause she doesn't have next to her powers anymore. So yeah. it just immediately makes her a whiny little baby. Maven also does some whining. He calls out to Cal for help, saying that he'll they'll kill him, they'll kill Mare, but Cal doesn't even doesn't turn around. Care. He's just busy making sure his troops are pouring into the drains and that those guns are firing. Mare's kind of ashamed of herself. She's like, I'm a fool. I can't believe I thought this would work. And Oh, definitely. And then the the end of this the end of this chapter is really nice. I like it. It's not nice, but it's well written. Uh it says the sun begins to rise behind Cal's head, framing him against the dawn. It's too bright, too sharp, and too soon. I have to shut my eyes. Wow. Yeah. Because it's rising red as the dawn, but it's too much for her because They've lost. They've lost. Yeah. All this big plan that that she had been so confident in and they blew it and now she's being drug in to face the king for judgment her and maven both so that's our cliffhanger for this chapter and for people who have read these books before or at least just this first one you know that the next chapter is a pretty big chapter um, we are still, I think, in the process of deciding if we're going to do one or two episodes on this chapter. I'm thinking two. We might have to do It'll two. It'll depend on how recording goes. We'll see. Yeah. I'm, so. I'm thinking two because I think we're going to have to do one to really follow through the storyline and everything, and then another one to go back through from the beginning of the book to the end of chapter 26 because there's so much we need to talk about that yeah. we can't until after until chapter 26. Until after chapter 26, yeah. So I think there's going to be a lot we'll need to catch up on. Yeah, so we are about to come to the dramatic conclusion of the first book of Red Queen. So we are very excited to be wrapping up this first one and for you guys to have come along on this journey with us. Yeah. After that, we will be dropping some special episodes before we pick up the second book. So definitely keep an eye out for information on that. And the places that you can find all of that, I'll give you that information. Uh, and then we'll do Fan Art Corner. So you can, um, for our fan casting, for our dream casting episode, um, send us all of your thoughts on who you want to play everybody in the upcoming Peacock series, because that's one of the special episodes we're going to do after we finish this book. Yes. We'll cover the characters from the first book. Uh, so send those to reading with the Rockefellers at gmail.com. Um, you can also email us any fan art that you have there. You can find us on Instagram at reading with the Rockefellers. And um, we've got all of our fan art there and some great stuff. You can uh, shoot us a DM there. You can go to our website, which is www.readingwiththerockefellers.com. All of our episodes are there. They're available for download. We've got our blog, our fan art. You can see our smiling faces. Meredith and Olivia, our mascot rats. <laughs> the cutest little rats in the world. The cutest rats in the whole entire world that got to try tortilla chips for the first time tonight. Tonight, and they were very excited. <laughs> They've been well behaved tonight, too. They have been well behaved. They've been good girls. Um, and then fan art for this week, because there's, uh, like I said, the fan art section on our website, and we always feature it. On our Instagram, so let me show you guys this week's fan art. Give me the fan art. 
ditty, a little song for our fans. Oh, I like that. Wow. Let me see that again. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. So this week's fan art is uh, an illustration of Mare and Cal and Maven. And we get a shot of the palace in the background, which yeah, is awesome. It's one reason like why I like this one. Cover type that would be situation. an awesome poster for the first season yeah. for the show. Yeah. I was super excited when I found this. This comes from an artist. Um on Instagram at Isabella M H Smith. So I S A B E L L A M H S M I T H. Um, she's got quite a few red queen stuff and some other great art. So we will have that posted on this week's episode post. Um, Isabella's art will be featured on there and we'll have it again on our webpage, which is www.readingwiththerockefellers.com. Fan art there. And then the YouTube videos, it's always featured on there too. Mia does a wonderful job. Uh, that's probably the best uh, shout out that we have to the artists is on our YouTube video. Mia does a really great job with featuring the art and uh, the artist handle and everything. So I did, as an update from last week's episode, I did get the name changed on the YouTube channel. So you should just be able to go to YouTube and search for our channel, uh, Reading with the Rockefellers. There is a video version of every episode. Um, like I said, Mia puts those together so you can see um, the fan art that we're talking about that week and all kinds of little cool stuff that she puts in the videos. And I think that's it. Anybody else got anything? This no. Week? Are we nope. saving it all for the next two I'm episodes? Just, just preparing myself for the next chapter because it's going to be a. It's going to be. And a the worst part is, I'm starting theater right when we're starting that. So. Yep. I'm gonna. I may just die. So. Yep. Well, we we get to take you back and forth too, and from theater, and then also work. So. We totally feel you. <laughs> it's going to be busy time in the Rockefeller house, but we are excited that you guys are along for this journey with us. We really appreciate you listening and we will see you next week for the, at least part one, we think of chapter 26 and wrapping up Red Queen. Mm -hmm. So we will see everybody next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.